All right, welcome back to um, the last of our solubility in friends or solubility in complexes unit, simultaneous equilibria involving complexes and acids and bases. So basically we're combining some different types of equilibria here. First major thing for you to look at is in the, um, in the set of notes that you probably have, part A should say complex ions are often soluble in water, not insoluble. That provides a driving force in order for a lot of other reactions to actually occur. Um, and therefore, it allows things that are sometimes insoluble to become soluble again. It uses Le Chatelier's principle. It's kind of fun. Take a moment to read over that. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the idea of this silver chloride salt where we're adding ammonia to the solution. So we have something that's essentially insoluble, has a very low KSP, and then we have, if we have silver ion plus ammonia, we have something that has a very large KF. So this complex is, is pretty huge. If both of these things are happening at the same time, I can generate a, essentially a net ionic equation or a total equation using Hess's law. If I do that, I'm adding the equations together and then I have to multiply the K values. All right, I've done this twice and the camera was not behaving, so I've given up on redoing it completely. We'll do it like we did in class today. Take a second to read exercise one. I'm going to kind of walk you through it. All right, we have a scenario where we're given two separate reactions with two separate KFs. They are interrelated. We have an intermediate sort of partially formed silver complex here. We want to find the concentrations of the silver, the intermediate portion, and the final silver complex ion. We're also given the volumes and the concentrations of the sources for the silver ion and for the thiosulfate ion. So whether we're doing BCA or whether we're doing rice, we're not sure yet, but we're going to need to know the moles and or the concentrations of my individual components when I first put them together. So the first thing that I want you to do is that I want you to find the moles and the initial concentration for both the silver ion and for the thiosulfate ion. So pause it here and try to do that, and then I'm just going to show you what those values are in a few seconds. Okay, hopefully you paused it and tried it yourself. You ended up with 0 0.00015 moles of silver, and that concentration, or one mole of thiosulfate, and that concentration. The next thing that we need to consider is which equation do we want to use? And my answer to that is going to be, I want you to put them together. The reason I want you to put them together is that the product from one is used as a reactant in another, and therefore it's very difficult to judge how much of this one gets used up in this one. Is it all of it? Is it some of it? Is it, you know, a tenth of it? So the easiest way to do that is to take this ion out of the picture for the time being, put them together. So I want you to use Hess's law to put the, get to get the total equation and to get the new K formation. Do that now, pause it. Okay. I can't show you the whole thing there, but we'll get in a second. So the overall equation, Ag plus plus 2S2O3 minus 2, forms the complex, multiplied the Ks to get this value. This is an enormous K, entirely product favored. So now we have to decide, are we talking about equilibrium, where we want to use rice and molarity, just a little bit dissociates, or are we talking about 
going to completion where we want to use BCA and moles. Hopefully you're saying BCA and moles because here it is. My initial values that I solved for the beginning. My change. Here again I'm using the stoichiometric ratio and here to get my total number of moles at the end. Excuse me while I scoot it up. Dividing by the total volume, so I forgot a liters there, to get the new concentrations for the thiocyanate and for the complex. So at least there's one of our needed ions. Now we know that we said this goes to completion, but in reality, there has to be some amount of every single ion present in that solution. So we can calculate the amount of silver by using the new K value and its expression. So go ahead and do that. Okay, you're back. I plugged it in, new K value. There's the complex, there's the unknown silver. There's the thio, uh, excuse me, not thiocyanate, but um, thiosulfate, there we go, squared, don't forget to do that. Here's my Ag plus concentration, so basically zero. Once we have this, we can go back to either one of the other two equations, the individual split equations to figure out the concentration of the missing piece, the, the intermediate. So I chose to do the, uh, the first equation. So you're going to use the KF1 and its expression. Plug in the value for the silver. Plug in the value for the thiosulfate. And then you'll get your value for the missing ion. And there it is, KF1, unknown ion, thiosulfate. This time it's not squared because it's not using the two coefficient in the equation. Ag plus concentration. So there's your three. Smallest, medium, largest overall, but still none of them are huge.